What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a super exciting Liverpool transfer news video because Alexis McAllister is about to finalize his deal to move to Liverpool and this has been confirmed by not only Fabrizio Romano but Alexis McAllister's brother himself has given an interview where he said that he is very close, to, his brother Alexis is very close to signing for Liverpool so all those details and a lot more will be revealed in this video so make sure to watch it in full and leave a like on this video if you enjoy these updates and turn on the bell notification if you want to keep uh, being up to date with all the Liverpool latest transfer news and Fabrizio Mano said that Liverpool are set to pay way less than the 60 to 70 million pound figure that some outlets have claimed that Liverpool will have to pay to beat to meet Brighton's release clause for Alexis McAllister. Fabrizio Simano on his own YouTube channel has said that Carlos, the father of Alexis McAllister, will be in England and the mission is to complete the negotiation for Alexis McAllister next week. We know Liverpool are absolutely front runners. they have to complete some final details on the contract of the player and then Alexis McAllister will become a new Liverpool player. They have agreement in principle on the length of the contract, on the salary and this it's about some final Final clauses that they are discussing for Alexis McAllister and then he will agree 100% the personal terms with Liverpool and then join Liverpool because they will pay the release clause to Brighton and uh, uh, Fabrizio Mano said trust me if you see records of 70, 65 or 60 million pounds no it is way less than this it is a very good deal for Liverpool in this case if they will be able to complete the transfer but the timing is very clear next week for Alexis McAllister transfer it will be done and uh, sealed hopefully if uh, nothing uh, like uh, disastrous happens and that is very very encouraging and Alexis McAllister could be the first of many brilliant midfielders to join Liverpool this summer and the cousin and so not the brother the cousin of Alexis McAllister has confirmed that he's close to signing for Liverpool which is very very exciting news he basically gave an interview where he was asked will Alexis McAllister McAllister joined Liverpool and he said he can't say for 100% that he will join Liverpool but he's very close to joining. They are in negotiations and everybody knows that uh, Alexis McAllister is close to joining uh, Liverpool which is really really exciting. So basically what I understand is Liverpool already have an agreement with Brighton on the transfer fee and now we only have to complete the final negotiations when it comes to Alexis McAllister's contract. The major things have all been agreed. Alexis McAllister will sign a five-year contract until 2028 with a further one-year option to extend his contract with a further year. His wages will be like three times as much as uh, what he earned at Brighton but it will still fall into the Liverpool wage structure. Liverpool's only concern according to Ben Jacobs said and he's a very reliable journalist as well. Liverpool's only concern is obviously that another club comes in and creates a complication which is again why they are trying to be as fast as they possibly can because it's obvious that McAllister has had an outstanding season and he was brilliant at the World Cup. There has been rumblings of Chelsea because of the Pochettino factor but Chelsea had other targets and they have really moved away from McAllister and, and more towards Caicedo. They actually are in negotiations with Sporting to sign Manuel Ugarte for around 60 million euros and uh, that just shows that you don't really need Champions League football to attract these kind of players. All you need is um, to have a lot of money and to be uh, considered uh, quite a big club. But the Premier League is so attractive that even mid-table clubs if they have money to spend they can attract international players and that's uh, that's a fact. Uh, Liverpool feel that they are in control of the situation but we have to be aware that if we take too long with these negotiations another club could come in and get McAllister which would be an absolute nightmare scenario for Liverpool and McAllister's cousin whose name is Luciano Guaychcochea has indicated that everyone know, basically knows his move 
to Liverpool is close. I cannot say where he's going to play, but I, I, I think everyone knows it's close to Liverpool. It's a big team, but everywhere, everywhere he goes, I hope he can we play well. And uh, McAllister recently explained why he's very calm about the situation. I'm very calm because I have the possibility of being in a club like Brighton that accompanied me at all times and in which I enjoy being very much. If I do not have to leave the club, I will continue very happy here, but I'm aware that there will be possibilities and if a good offer arrives for the club and for me we will evaluate it and that just shows that Alexis McAllister is a very very humble guy and uh, he's not like a like a typical cocky egomaniac footballer so I think that's very very good news and he, he fits into the Liverpool dressing room the Liverpool uh, kind of characters that L Jurgen Klopp likes to have around him he doesn't really like these like cocky egoistical, flashy footballers. And Alexis McAllister had a brilliant season at Brighton. In 40 games he scored 12 goals, got 3 assists uh, and he averaged 2 tackles per 90 minutes, 0 0.6 interceptions, 2.5 shots per 90 minutes, 1.3 key passes, 1.2 dribbles per game in, uh, in Premier League football. He has even distributed the ball well after completing 87.2% of his attempted passes in a league football, which is really, really high and very good number. McAllister is a solid tackler of the ball and he usually works very hard for his team defensively. And he has very good engine, very good work rate and he also can strike the ball with a lot of power and accuracy from long range. He has also got the vision to set up his teammates for some clear-cut chances and hopefully at Liverpool where Liverpool will score a lot more goals than Brighton usually score. Hopefully Alexis McAllister can uh, also score more goals and get more assists. We can expect McAllister to bring more goals and creativity to Liverpool's midfield, something that Liverpool desperately need after a very mediocre season by Liverpool's standards. He's good enough to serve as an ideal successor to James Milner who will leave uh, Liverpool and at 24, McAllister has still got a lot of room to grow as a footballer. He's not the finished article. He's still in the middle of his development or at the final stages of his development. And usually midfielders peak at 27, 28 years old. So McAllister still has a good few years to develop and grow. And I'm sure that Jurgen Klopp can nurture and develop him and grow him into a world-class player. So what do you think about this Alexis McAllister's imminent transfer to Liverpool? Let me know in the comments below and I'm really really happy that we are really close to finding such a brilliant player and also we have a big major update Fabrizio Mano said that RB Leipzig are really pushing to sign Fabio Carvalho on a permanent deal. RB Leipzig really appreciate him as a player so they want Fabio Carvalho, they want to sign him but Liverpool are still trying to find a different kind of solution because they don't want to lose control of the player. So they are trying to loan Fabio Carvalho out. We don't really know what Fabio Carvalho himself wants. I'm, I'm sure he wants to play football next season away from Liverpool. I'm not sure if he would prefer a loan deal or a permanent deal. But at this moment, because he's contracted to Liverpool still, I think for another four years, it's basically in Liverpool's hand what they, with Liverpool's hands, what they do with Fabio Carvalho. If they don't want to sell him, then Leipzig uh, won't get him, unless they offer like crazy amounts of money. But I don't think they will. Leipzig are a very shrewd club and they also just won their second German Cup, their second DFB Pokal, beating Frankfurt 2 -nil. And my fellow countryman Dominic Soboslai has scored the second goal for Leipzig, so he's now back-to-back -back German Cup winner with Leipzig, which is really, really awesome. And also Nkunku scored and Nkunku is going into Chelsea this summer, which is going to be a huge transfer for Chelsea. He's exactly the kind of goal scorer that they need. And I also wanted to talk about Liverpool's homegrown conundrum, because you know that uh, you have to have a certain amount of homegrown players in your squad. The rule defines a homegrown player as someone who, irrespective of nationality or age, has been registered with any FA affiliated club for at least three years before their 21st birthday or the end of the season during which they turn 21. For a club fewer than eight homegrown players, the maximum squad size proportionately decreases. For instance, for instance, 
If Liverpool would, would have only six homegrown players, they can only name a 23 man squad. However, s clubs can supplement their squad with an unlimited number of under 21 players. Liverpool named a 24 man Premier League squad for last season, becoming the only team to reach the 17 player cap for non homegrown players. Of course, over the summer they added Darwin Nunez, Arthur Melo, Carvalho, Calvin Ramsey by losing Mane, Origi and Minamino, this reduced to their squad size to 23. Liverpool's seven homegrown players last season were Kelleher, Joe Gomez, Trent, Ned Phillips, Jordan Henderson, James Milner and Alex Oxley-Chamberlain. Their inclusion allowed Liverpool to acquire Cody Gakpo in January and restore their squad to 24 players, including 70 non-homegrown players. But that's the thing, James Milner and Alex Oxley-Chamberlain left out of those homegrown players. Ned Phillips could still leave, Joe Gomez could still leave, Kelleher could still leave. So there are a lot of homegrown players that Liverpool could lose this summer and we are losing a minimum of two. Of course the departures of Artur, Firmino and Naby Keita we will create vacancies in non-homegrown spots that, of, that is offset by losing two homegrown players, Milner and Ox. The promotion of Curtis Jones from under 21 to the homegrown category will boost this tally if Liverpool retain Kelleher and Ned Phillips. However, if those players leave, Liverpool's homegrown contingent falls to just four, limiting Liverpool to a 21-man squad unless they sign a homegrown player and uh, it's just not, it's just not uh, ticking a box, uh, homegrown players. You, it requires a strategic approach where homegrown players must be capable of making a significant contribution to the team. They must be good enough to play for a club as big as Liverpool. And of course, signing either Jude Benning or Mason Mount would have helped with the homegrown quota what we have withdrawn from those two players because they are just too expensive. Internal solutions such as Tyler Morton and Connor Bradley might mitigate the situation but a revamp in midfield and addressing other areas uh, of the team might force the club into difficult decisions if they cannot secure players fitting the required criteria. So in conclusion Liverpool certainly has a homegrown player conundrum on its hands this summer. That's why I wanted to talk about this. Why the transfer window provides an opportunity to sign new players, bolster the squad, the homegrown rule certainly complicates the equation. It will be fascinating to see how Liverpool tackles this challenge in the coming months. It's going to be very very interesting and maybe Liverpool will sign one or two talented young English players. I mean we could sign a fullback who is homegrown from the Premier League because we definitely need a backup for Trent or we could sign a young centre-back who is homegrown to help uh, with our centre-back options. And Dean Jones, a journalist, has described Liverpool getting Arthur Mello as a, as a kind of a silly moment because Liverpool paid £110,000 per week for a full year for Arthur Mello for just 13 minutes of football. He, uh, Dean Jones said, I think we should remember clubs sometimes are forced into these silly situations whereby they just have to make sure that they've got a certain amount of numbers and also a certain level of experience within the squad. That's probably kind of a situation they were forced into. You will look back on it as a bit of a silly moment, but I think Liverpool had their reasons at the time to sign Arthur Melo. The main reason was not getting a proper midfielder last summer when we missed out on Chuameni, we should have gone for another midfielder and not just sat on our hands and waited and waited until deadline day where we had so few midfielders fit that Liverpool were forced into making a making a transfer, making a signing and that's not good planning for me and Liverpool have had to have had to do better last summer and it also cost us this season dearly. If uh, instead of Artur Melo we signed a player who was durable, fit, who had energy then Liverpool's season could have been just a few points better and maybe we could have made it into the Champions League places, into the top four. 
knocking Newcastle out of the equation uh, and knocking them on down to fifth. It's a travesty that Newcastle finished ahead of us because yes, Newcastle spent a lot of money, but their squad is not better than Liverpool's squad. So it was a massive failure for Liverpool to finish below Newcastle. But yeah, that's just my opinion. Let me know what is yours in the comments below. And thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.